In this video, we're going to talk about histograms in our software. First, we're going to look at the kind of default histograms. Um, then I'll show you how to adjust the breaks or the bin sizes. That is to say the breaks are the number of these divisions and the bin size is the size of each of these bins. Um, and then I'll kind of just give you the basics of how to get fancy with uh, adding labels. Um, and then I'll show you how to compare the histogram to a normal distribution. And then lastly, I'll show you how to convert your histogram data into a kernel density plot. Cool, so let's get started. Uh, let's go to our window. I'm gonna load up this script called uh, for that I prepared ahead of time. Arrange the windows vertically. So over here's the, the, the code. Uh, I'm gonna post the code in the R description so you could follow along with it. And then over here is the R console that you always see kind of opening up. Uh, first off, let's just load the data. So I selected the command and then I press the run line. So now we're going to call, we're creating this object called NHIS. Uh, this symbol here means assign to NHIS, the thing that comes after. The thing that comes after is read.csv. Uh, so it's going to pull the data from this website. Uh, that's a CSV file and it's a National Health Institute survey. So NHIS data uh, that's kind of like sub selected down to a few values, to few variables. Let me show them to you. So we have a uh, gender, body mass index, sleep, education, weight, uh, and height. Uh, we're going to be focusing on weight here. Um, first off, see that the max is 999. So it's sort of suggesting that the maximum weight of these people are 1,000 pounds. That's obviously not the case. If you were to look at all of those values, there's like you know at least 50 or so in this NHIS survey. Value of 999 or 997 or 998 are actually indications or little markers that the data is missing. People either refuse to give it or um, they didn't know the data. So the next line we're going to do here uh, in order to do a histogram for, for weight in this example, uh, we're going to take a subset of it. So we're redefining NHIS. We're reassigning it. So by doing um, this again on top of a variable NHIS, we're saying we're reassigning it. We're creating something on top of NHIS. So assign and then the subset function. So the subset is going to go to that data that we select, so NHIS and then comma, and it's going to follow these conditions. So it's going to select all the observations in NHIS uh, and take only the ones where weight is less than 300. The idea being that for anyone who indicated their weight was over 300, those are outliers and those are people who were moving. So let's run this line and it should clean up the data. So uh, summary NHIS. Should have cleaned it up. Yep, perfect. So before we had a max weight of 999, now we have a max weight of 298. So the simplest plot we could do is just have everything default. First off, uh, I'm going to do uh, attach NHIS. So what that allows us to do is um, where before when we did the summary, we did NHIS dollar sign. So go to that data, dollar sign. Now select a column from NHIS and select weight. We uh, now, by attaching NHIS, we don't have to do that NHIS dollar sign anymore. We could have just done summary and weight. And it takes it. Where before, had we not done attach and then uh, done summary and just weight, it would have given an error message. So let's do history and weight. Come up here, click the run, and now we have a simple histogram. Now suppose we want to edit this, the plot here, to make it look a little bit more consistent or change it in some way. First off, we're going to consider the number of breaks. So these lines here are the breaks. And right now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine breaks, giving a total of ten bins. So this is one bin, this column's another, this is another, this is another going forward. So first off, let's do breaks. So we're going to adjust the number of breaks. So we can do hist, comma, and then the command of breaks equals 100. Let me run this. Now we have 100 breaks here. Suppose, you know, this doesn't look quite right. Suppose we just, where before we had 10 bins, now we want to have, say, 20 bins. I'm going to put 19 breaks in there, run the code. And now we have a histogram with a total of 20 bins, and that is to say 19 breaks, so one, two, three, four, going forward. 
uh, and you have weights falling from 100 to 300, uh, and these are distributions. So like the highest weight, so that would be the mode is, uh, or the median is going to be somewhere around this area. Is what we mean. Now suppose that we want to have, let's say we just want to have one bin, each of these little bins, for each weight between the minimum weight and the maximum weight. So what we're going to do is kind of define our little bin values. So first off, it's important to know, well, what is the minimum weight and what is the maximum weight? So min weight, max weight, you'll find it. The minimum weight is 100 pounds and the maximum weight is 298. So in order to get a bin for each pound, what we need to do is define bins that start for the minimum weight and go to the maximum weight and have one value, one, uh, one pound between each one. So we're going to do bins equals and then a sequence that starts at the minimum, it ends at the maximum, and then the difference between each value is going to be a single pound. So when we run this line, run it, I'll show you what bins is. So now we have a bin that goes from each uh, pound here, and it's broken up by each pound. So when we run this histogram, we're going to do hist, weight, and then the breaks equals the bins. And so now we have uh, we have almost 200 bins here, starting from 100, going all the way to the maximum weight. So now that doesn't quite look right. It kind of looks a little odd. So let's change this to have one bin reflecting five pounds. So we're now going to redefine bins to be the sequence from minimum weight to maximum weight. Uh, we're going to add a plus five here just to make sure that uh, in the, the bins goes from all the way to the min all the way to the max and beyond the max. Um, if the bins is kind of within the range of weights, it's going to give an error message that the, these bins need to go all the way from the beginning, all the way past the end in order to work. So let's define bins as this. We now change bins to range from 100, 105, 110, all the way to 300. Remember the max was 298. And now when we do this histogram, we now have these bins that each represent five pounds. So this bin here is all the people who weigh from 100 to 105. This bin here is all the people who weigh from 105 to uh, 110, so on and so forth. Good job. So you can see you got some flexibility with how the histogram looks. Now suppose you want to change these labels. Uh, you know, you're turning something in, you want it to look the way, exactly the way you want it to look. You only got a, a few options here. So labels. Um, we're going to run this code here. So you saw just this portion of it is exactly what we just ran, um, but with a different number of bins. So here we go, and this. See this? Uh, we could add in labels by adding additional commas and then defining main. And then everything inside here is what the, the main the, the main title along here is going to read. So we're going to call it distribution of weights. Um, this is, uh, what is that, forward slash n, is that backslash n, NHS data. This is going to be um, a line break, a new line. We're going to call the y label, as you say, this label right here, frequency of weights. And we're going to call the x label uh, weight in pounds down here. And we're going to color all of these bins gray. So let's run this whole line select everything I want to run, and then I click the run line. Bam. There we go. Good job. And you can see you have a lot of options. You have a new line. You could kind of do a lot of different things. Uh, now suppose you want to compare your distribution in the histogram here to a normal distribution. Uh, you might need to do that in order to do, let's say, t-testing. I think for small sample t-testing, uh, one of the assumptions in order to use a t-distribution is that the population that underlies your sample is normally distributed. So how do we know that that's the case? Well, we could kind of qualitatively do that just by looking 
uh, at our distribution compared to a normal distribution and kind of stating that, yeah, this looks more or less normal distribution. Now move on to the t-test. So how do we put on on top of this a normal distribution? Well, we do it the following code down here. So first off, this line here is we're going to assign a new value h, and we're going to assign it to the histogram we just ran. So this code all here is exactly what we ran in the previous line. We're calling it h. So when we run this, if we're to get rid of that, when we run it, you can see exactly the same thing pops up. Next off, how we need to create the line that's going to be the normal distribution. So this first thing here is going to just create a sequence of 40 um, breaks from the minimum height to the max height. So when I run this, you can see what xfit is. X fit. You can see it's just a sequence of values going from the minimum weight to the maximum weight. So what does y fit do? The next line here Well, the next two lines take our data. Uh, given our sample's uh, mean and standard deviation, it's going to uh, say, taking that, well, what would a normal distribution look like on top of it? Uh, and then the last line here is lines. So when we run it all together, it's going to plot those lines on top of our histogram. So now we have our histogram here, and then the line running through it is a normal distribution fitted on top of our histogram assuming the mean of our sample and assuming the standard deviation of our sample. And this doesn't perfectly look like a normal distribution, but I think we still run t-test with the, uh, the weight data anyway. <laughs> okay, so lastly, let's do the kernel density plot. Um, first off, what's the kernel density plot? The kernel density is based on the same information as our histogram, uh, but it's a smooth and continuous version of that information. In particular, it's handy when you want to compare, let's say, two samples. So rather than looking at this histogram and trying to like, you know, have another histogram directly, say, below it or to the side of it, you could have two kernel densities uh, sitting right next to each other, so two of these smooth lines, um, and kind of make an inference from there. So how do we get the kernel density? I'll show it to you with this code right here. First, we're going to pull the density function here and apply it to weight. Let me get rid of this guy. So we're going to run that density, and now we're going to plot. So what this did is uh, created a new variable called density, and it's signed to. Then it's going to use the density function. And the next line, we're going to plot it. And here's our kernel density. Uh, just to kind of make it look a little fancy, to fancy it up, we're going to add uh, some labels and then some add some colorizations. To, fortunately, with this function, to add color to this, we're going to have to do this other thing called polygon, apply to density, and then make it gray. So when we run this, we have a nice little visualization of it. And then just to end it, I thought I'd show you how to compare two kernel density plots. Um, so, you know, one of the advantages of uh, kernel density over histograms is with histograms, you really can't see two different histograms. Uh, or if you convert it into kernel density, you can kind of compare them next to each other. So with weight, one obvious thing to do is, well, let's compare male weights to female weights, for example. Um, I don't have time to go over everything that's here, but uh, the following code will let us compare the two kernel densities for males and females. So you can see here the lower one in the green is the female weights distribution, and then in the red here are the male weights, the distribution of male weights. Obviously male weights are a bit above female weights. Uh, thanks. Have a good day. If you have any questions, just send me a message. Thank you. Bye.